Hey Madison, welcome back to another great episode of Madtown tonight. 48 hour film fest season is upon us. Milwaukee is hosting their competition this weekend. We've got a couple of the MTT crew members who are going out there to compete, so best of luck to you guys. Uh, that being said, we have two award-winning entries from last year's competition from Madison Cruise that we're going to show you tonight. We also have Eli Quinn, Middleton native and local artist, stopping by to chit-chat a little bit about his artwork. And Madison, remember, if you ever encounter some porcupines in the woods, I will let you know what you can call them at the end of the episode. This is Madtown Tonight. Taken to my sister's this weekend. Sweetie, can we not talk about your crazy ass family right now, please? Hey. Hey. Let's go to our spot. You know how I feel about family. Well, exactly how you feel about family. I feel the same way. So why don't we start our own? <laughs> why? You got something you want to tell me? <laughs> you got something you want to tell me? Yo, you got something you want to tell me. Why would you not tell me that? So, what's this guy's story? It's Alan Smithy. He has been a wreck ever since his wife died. It's a damn shame, too. He's a hell of a chemist. Poor bastard. So what's with the umbrella? Meet Mrs. Smithy. They come in every week, order the same drinks, have the same conversation about the same old bullshit. Goddamn waste of liquor. It's a waste of a life. Amen to that. You can be my Cinderella walking down the street, no stress, just blessed to be here by your side. Lay your head on my chest, misunderstood, yet so unbreakable. Miss Umbrella, the love we share is incredible. And nobody sees you the way that I see you. Addicted to your love like a fiend to a needle. Adrenaline rush meets a dopamine cathedral. You fly like an eagle, your love is so lethal. Let's hit the park before dark and make love in it. We can take our time, baby girl, there's no rush in it. Kissing on your neck, slow sex. Makes your body wet, no need to flex Just express, don't suppress Let your love stretch to the stars And progress to the next level Your soul is love and nothing less Yes Hey, what the fuck, asshole? Watch where you're walking I'm sorry You know how it is, man Love is blind Yo, what are you on, man? Just high on dopamine, man Think you're Bill Nye the Science Guy? Hey, what the fuck? Oh, no! No!
is what it's all about. My name is Dr. Smithy. You can call me Annie. I'm so glad you could make it. You are here because you signed up for a sociological experiment, correct? I did at college. I signed up at the mall. Where you signed up does not matter. What matters is that you are all here. So... <laughs> I mean, what is this all about? This is what it is all about. At some point this week, unbeknownst to you, each of you drank fatal poison. The poison has been making its way through your system. In a few minutes, it will reach its terminal potency. Here is the antidote. There is only enough for one, I'm afraid. A partial dose will only extend your time on this planet a short while longer. Are you kidding me? This is very real. The experiment will commence now. It will end when you decide who lives and who dies. Wait a minute. Hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. I saw this in college before. They freak us out to see what we'll do to each other. All we just gotta do is sit down, relax, and they give up, and they come in and they say that it was all a lie. I mean, but what if it's real? It's not real. Nobody's going to kill us. I don't know. I haven't been feeling good all day. Me neither, man. That's the power of suggestion. <laughs> What's an envelope? I mean, I don't know. I didn't open it. Open it? Come on. coffee I drank last night. This is the soda that I drank on Thursday night. This is the party that I was at last night. <laughs> okay, they have pictures of us drinking something. I mean, is that how we drink the poison? Why else would they have taken those pictures? You drank first. So? It's been in your system a lot longer than either of us. I honestly don't feel well. It's probably the poison that's killing me. Hey, be sensitive. I'm, I'm telling you, this is fake. No. Seriously. I think I'm dying. No, you're not. No one is trying to kill us. Nobody does that. She's dead. She's dead, man. No, she's not. She's an actress. See, she is an actress. You are a plant. And you're trying to see what I'll do if I get scared. I know how this all goes. Now you wouldn't mind if I drank this antidote then, right? Probably just water. Can you feel it? Feel what? Just the little burn at the base of your stomach. 
I mean, I had Mexican for lunch. Are you famous, A Little bit, I guess. Then we're poison! Oh! Oh! God, my stomach! Yes. Here, we'll drink half. You heard what she said, half won't save us. It only extends the dying time. So what do we do? Give it to me! No! Come on, man, I have a lot to live for. And I don't? Look at you, you're not even sweating. You're probably not even poisoned. I'm dying, man. Give it to me, please. No, it's mine. What the fuck gives you the right to call it? I don't want to die. I have a wife. I just got married. So what? You think nobody will miss me if I die? Give me it! I can feel it working already. <laughs> you killed me. I didn't kill you. The people who poisoned you killed you. What makes you better than me? Why do you think you get to live? I just made a decision, man. I don't know why. Why does anybody get to live more than anyone else? I wasn't thinking about myself, man. I was thinking about my wife. Well, your decision just killed me. Look, one of us was gonna die anyway, right? At least this way, I could find out who did this and bring him to justice. No, I'm going to die. You want, you want justice. I'll give you fucking justice. Mind if I join you? Join you? Join you? Join you? Join you? Join Hey Madison, welcome back. We're here with one of your very own, well, not very own, but down the road, Eli Quinn. Grew up in Middleton, Wisconsin. Hello, Hello Eli. Hi. How you doing today? Uh, I'm well, how are you? Oh, not too shabby at all. So you're here to discuss some of your art, because you are an artist in the community, aren't you? That's right. Excellent. I don't so not or anything, but I do do some art. Do do art? Mm -hmm. Do 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 art? I do do art. <laughs> Okay, I got there now. Got it. Got it solved. I was curious, but eh, I'm not going to explore that right now. <laughs> so, how did you get started with with your artwork? <clears throat> how did you start? How did you get the bug? Well, from the very young age, like three or four, I started drawing um, pencils and stuff and making comic strips. I always liked like Garfield and Peanuts, right? The Charlie Brown stuff. P. You did say, you said peanuts. Yes. Okay, yes. just wanted, because you mm -hmm. said doo-doo art, and now peanuts, I just wanted to... You're the one interpreting that way. <laughs> so. I don't let them be the judge, because okay. I'm hearing what I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm not sure what the mic's picking up, so you guys figure that out, but I'm peanuts, and... Snoopy, Charlie Brown, whatever you... <laughs> okay, perfect. So I made, like, little comic books and strips and things with these, like, I used to have stuffed animals, like a lot of us did, and... Um, you know, Transformers and all that, so make a lot of different... You just used them as your models? 
Yeah, you know, I like to draw robots and cool things and whatever. And Did then, you? What's that? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, and then, you know, eventually started reading more comic books rather than comic strips. And um, so when I was a teenager, I did just hundreds and hundreds of comic book drawings and various characters and stuff, some of my own. And uh, once I went to school, though, once I got out of high school and started going, like, learning actual real life drawing, mm -hmm. I got a lot better because before I was drawing these big, crazy, muscular, you know, things. I, I learned anatomy from the comic books, but I didn't actually know how everything Like real anatomy. Going. Yeah. So just tons of pictures of Batman. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. Just I can imagine. Of, like, the same thing in, like, the sketchbook. I'd go through and it's like, here's another person with, like, you know, gargantuan muscles that are ridiculous. Just all right. Now, with your doo-doo art, did you ever draw, like, Batman taking a deuce or anything like that? Like, Batman, no, Batman I, on the loo? Not the, no, nothing I'm willing to uh, admit here today. Fair enough. Uh, with your action figures, did you ever pose, like, Optimus Prime and draw him like a French girl at all? Like, I'm just curious <laughs> if that ever... Like this or yeah. Um, again, I'll plead the fifth on that. Touche. Uh, Touche. But it's, it's certainly possible. I don't know. All right. Inquisitive young minds, you know. Fair enough. Now, you did you taught for a while at Madison Media Institute. I know this because that's when when I was going there, you worked there, mm -hmm. and you taught in the game program. Yes. Okay. The game art and animation. What uh, what classes did you teach then? I did most of the classes that dealt with the creation of characters and environments and texturing. So a lot of it had to do with making. Everything's in three D. You know, we did a little bit of two D stuff. So like the side scroller thing, you'd have like on say your your phone or whatever, like mm -hmm. old school Super Nintendo games. But most of it was 3D based. We, we create the worlds, the characters in 3D, uh, create their surfaces, the materials, the textures, and all of that. And um, I would also do the classes where you take it into Unreal or Unity or another game engine so you could play it. Uh, there was other instructors there who dealt with things like motion capture and animation, making it move. So I was more of like building things and they were more moving it around. So you kind of set the tone. Mm -hmm. Did you do any like worlds or just character design then? Oh, yeah, world stuff, too. Okay, see, okay, see. Environments. Yeah. So it, when you're in the video game industry, the character design is usually like a really, you have to work to it, and it's kind of a high-tier type of thing. Okay. Usually there's more artists when you start out, you're making the environment. So, I mean, there's a lot more around you than there is, like, the characters here in the game, right? Like, mm -hmm. the entire immersive environment, you have to create all that, too. Okay. And you said you worked a lot with 3D characters, which, mm -hmm. how did that... So, <clears throat> did your art influence the way you taught the class, or did the way you teach influence your art? Like, what kind of pulled one way more than the other? It was back and forth, but um, initially, I was, I was never really a, an instructor mm -hmm. before I started, but I worked in the industry for about, you know, nine, ten years. Okay. So, um, I have kind of a laid-back sensibility when I'm teaching, so uh, that, inf that definitely influenced my teaching type of characteristics because I was the fundamentals of more traditional art. But as I did a lot more 3D and sculpting and making these characters, it makes it, it makes you your 2D drawing a little bit more informed because you have to think about it from all different angles when you're in a video game world. You have to have the characters, you have to have all sides of them and every inch of them has to be rendered in a certain way. So when you're doing just a portrait of someone, it's just one flat plane. But ha but having that knowledge of a 3D aspect, you yeah. know, if you are doing a 2D portrait, I can imagine that even though you can't see behind that person's head on a 2D image, yeah. you're thinking about it being a 3D artist. Yeah, you're like, Which, well, I know where that, that ear is going to be, so I know where the glasses are kind of cockeyed or something. You okay. Know? Um, we actually have a couple of the pieces that you've, you've you brought a couple pieces in today. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's get these bad boys. I'm going to get this big one out of the way first. This is a little lazy. Um, so this guy right here, <coughs> tell me about this guy. I'm, is it a mask? Like... <laughs> Do I, it's a like, big tribal? It kind of looks like a mask. It has eyeball type pieces on it. And this kind of looks like a nose. Yeah. Well, it's but. um, <laughs> it's called convergence, and it's something I did for a a local art show. It's called Madison Community Discourse, and they they've just done the second um, of these shows where uh, they have a theme that a bunch of different artists create a piece for. So. Last year it was love, so that's that's my idea of what love is in a very symbolic kind of way. No hearts or anything necessarily. I don't want it to be really chintzy. And okay. then this year it's uh, based on courage. So it's it's about a very nebulous but still tangible theme, mm -hmm. and then artists are free to interpret however they want. Okay. Now, and that is on display 
or not not that specifically because that was last year's, but yeah. your piece that you did this year for Courage, where, where can we see that anywhere? Or? It's currently on display at Art Inn, at, which is on East Washington. Okay. And myself and a bunch of other artists had their Courage pieces that they created just for the show up there. Okay. And um, there's lots of activities going on around that too. So there's, uh, you know, the, the Madison Community Discourse is designed to be very inclusive and have people like, do interactive uh, learning like classes and stuff like that in addition to like the gallery showings. Okay. And how long will that be up then? How long will your Courage piece be up? I think until this Saturday. Okay. Um, not sure of the date, but do for, they, for at least a week. Now, do they sell those pieces off or do those go back to the artist? Do they... Do they sell them, help the community any way like that? Or? Yeah, you can sell them. Um, I'm not sure how that works currently. Okay. So. Well, they, are, they are for sale. You can go on down there and check it out. Yeah. We do have another piece here. This one's much lighter. And yep. um, Let's see here. So, uh, what is this guy? So that's actually a crane, and I did that for a local band um, called the Garza. And... This is more of my regular style. I draw stuff, I, I draw my ideas with pen and ink, so like I'll use a crow quill, dip it into ink, and I'll draw that way. Did you say crow quill? Crow quill, yeah. Like a real crow's feather quill? No, they're just called crow quills, but it doesn't have, I, I, that'd be cool if it had like a big, you know, peacock feather or something. But it's just like a little, it's, it's like a, you know, one of your dipping fountain pens, essentially. And I'll draw all that, and then I'll color it digitally, um, so it's kind of like the comic book process. Okay. So I'll create pieces like that, and I'll uh, I'll sell them as prints as well. So like the original is just black and white, and then I create this stuff in Photoshop. I'll color it in, and then I'll sell it for prints. So you know it's easier to get um, for people to take them and you know be able to have them. So it's it you kind of cover you kind of really focus on your craft and the things that you've done because you start with a two D process, you take it into a three D element. Mm -hmm. Not 3D element, but you take it into Photoshop and give it color and kind of give it more of a 3D feel in there, I'm sure. And, yeah, and uh, I, like to get, I like to be able to mess around with a lot of different color schemes because I don't really have a, I don't know, like if I just put paint on the canvas or on top of the line work, then that's it, you know, it's going to stay that mm -hmm. way. Whereas if I can mess around with a bunch of things with the computer, then, you know, I can... Well, it's cleaner, too. I can experiment, to, yeah. I mean, it's cleaner. You yeah. don't have to deal with I don't have actual paint wet paint. Yeah. yeah, just kindergarten fingers. Only ink. Only ink. Um, now, where can people go to actually, other than see your work, where can people go to purchase your work? If anyone's interested in these pieces or other pieces that you've done. Well, I have prints and things available on my Store Envy page, which is eliquin.storeenvy.com. Okay. And that is, I have a few prints available there. And most, I have a Facebook page, which is just Facebook page. <laughs> Facebook page. Facebook.com. Facebook, yeah. Facebook. Eli, Eli Quinn Art. Art. Eli Quinn Art. Yeah. Um, a little trick about the store Envy. Uh, the E is shared at the end of store in the beginning of Envy because the internet. Yeah. Uh, so just otherwise you'll find out what happens if you put two E's in there. Just letting you guys know. <clears throat> um, so, along with that, you have Madison Discourse. Do you have any other shows planned for... The summer or in the near foreseeable future that anyone might be interested in seeing? I might have some work at some different galleries that are around town. I'm planning on creating a piece for the uh, something called the Pink Phoenix Exchange, a Pink Phoenix program, which is uh, an interesting project that's being undertaken. I think you can like Google Pink Phoenix, but it's P-Y-N-K rather than P-I-N-K, Pink Phoenix. And it's... Um, the pieces for that will be displayed at the Madison Public Library downtown. Okay. And that's around uh, sometime in autumn, I think September or so. So if people wanted to Google that, I don't know the exact. Make sure you thing. get. Make sure you guys get the Y in there because I'm. I'm. I don't even want to fathom what would come up <laughs> if you typed in Pink Phoenix on Google just with the internet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to do like an image search of that necessarily. Yeah. Uh, so not only are you a visual artist, but you are also a musician. That's correct. I'm, so I've been told. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I try. sorry to bring you guys' hopes up and then let you down. Eli and, what, what is your band called? Spittoon. Spittoon. Mm -hmm. How'd that come about? Uh, the name? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, uh, you know what, maybe that's a conversation. It was they, very, are, they are coming back. <laughs> it was very basic. One of my friends, I said, I, I want to do like a country, punky, kind of grizzly band. 
What would be a good name for that? And he goes, Spittoon. Like, without, without any sort of pause at all. I'm like, perfect. Done. Copy, <laughs> print. We got a band. Yeah. Now let's make some music. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you guys are going to stop by later this season. The whole band. Mm-hmm. So we'll definitely break into the details of all that. Okay. Um, I know that we do have a video for you guys at the end of this episode. So just give you a little taste of what Spittoon is all about. Eli, I want to thank you for stopping by today. Really no appreciate it. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah. And we'll see you when you come back with Spittoon. Cool. Sounds great. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Worn Down by Spittoon. <laughs> That's our show this week, Madison. Glad you could stop by. I would like to thank my guest, Eli, for coming in tonight. Also, good luck to every team competing in Milwaukee this weekend. Remember, Madison, 
We love you, and we cannot wait to show you off. This has been Madtown Tonight. Prickle!